back to our second dev stream. I'm your host, Laurie, your community manager for Icarus, and this is Dean Hall, the CEO. How's it feel to be back for a second time in a row? Good, yeah. I feel like uh, people can hear us this time, so that's always a good start. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of pranking uh, the Twitch stream actually and miming a few words at the True. beginning, but no, we're not. We're not. That we could mean. have done an interpretive dance. Yeah. You know? We actually have a Rocketworks dance crew, although I think it, <laughs> we've been too busy for it lately. I want to join the dance crew. Yeah, yeah. you should actually. So we, we should get we should get Ash to to crank it back up again. It's pretty exciting. God, that'd be awesome. Right, so we're really happy to have you here with us again today. Um, we've got everything planned out for you. This uh, week's theme is architecture and mayhem. So we are going to be running through a few things you saw last week to make up for the slight technical difficulties we had, but it's going to have a twist. So we're going to expect a lot of entertainment uh, coming out of today's stream, a lot of buildings and a competition. Uh, we're going to have a competition to see which team has built the most aesthetic cabin uh, while, for, while uh, forcing the nature and weather and animals, possibly another bear. We'll have to wait and see, but it's going to be a really good time. How do you feel about what we're going to be doing today? Pretty excited. Um, I feel like uh, we've got a pretty good team lined up. Um, They've played the game a lot. Um, actually, I saw there was a New Zealand YouTuber who I apologize, forgotten the name of, but had pointed out that in the last stream, it was very fast paced. Mm -hmm. And- uh, Was that rough? I think so. Yeah, in our yeah. Discord. Shout and um, had, uh, and I thought it was a really good point because he had sort of raised that you could tell that the people playing the game last week had played it a lot. Now that's a good thing, right? It's a good thing when the developers have played the game heaps. Mm -hmm. um, but. You know, it did bring out a good point is that not everyone's going to end up playing like that, especially for a start. So um, yep. it will be That's cool and, and maybe in future dev streams we can actually get some people in who haven't played the game much and Absolutely. then um, watch them and laugh at them a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. And some of those people might be your favourite Twitch streamer, so you'll have to keep tabs on us for those. But yes, today is going to be absolutely wonderful. We've got six developers which will be playing in the same game together. We've got Alyssa, Taylor, Drew, Francis and... Adam and Sean um, and they're from different backgrounds within the development team so you'll be watching Alyssa and Taylor who have teamed up and uh, we've got Drew Francis and then we've got Adam and Sean so we'll see who wins I I am thinking Alyssa and Taylor are gonna take this away okay. they've been talking behind the scenes preparing they had a test run yesterday to see who could build the best one and uh, I think it's gonna be quite exciting and we've got a straw poll that you'll be able to vote in um, around the 40 minute margin of the stream and uh, we will close it off after about five minutes of voting and uh, yeah it's gonna be great Cool. So oh, I, uh, my my predicted winner is yes. fire. I'm predicting oh. that fire will <laughs> win. Fire, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Their that's cabin is burning down for sure. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a fair point. Or team team lightning as well. Well, that yeah. causes the fire anyway. Alrighty. So let's uh, let's get into it. We're watching Alyssa and Taylor. Uh, so take it away. Be able to see it yet, will we? We will. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. We we are here. So another point of difference for this week's stream is we have um, Liam who is on our spectator camera. So you're going to see him flying around from a, a non-player perspective, and he'll be showcasing uh, all the different players that we have today and uh, what they're up to. So we've got somebody here uh, collecting some resources, collecting some wood. It's actually really neat to see uh, from this perspective, isn't it? Oh, actually, I'm just really, so So we, we put this in, um, it's something we talked about for a while, uh, like spectator type camera in the game. And um, um, yeah, and I think it makes like a huge difference. Yeah, uh. yeah, it really does. And you know, 
what we're going to be showing you today is uh, is a lot of fun. You know, you do have to try and stay alive and survive. But you know, people have uh, all sorts of different play styles when they play survival games. And today, um, yes, we are running through uh, what you have already seen already. But you know, we do have more leisurely players. We do have our more competitive survival players. So we're just showcasing a bit of fun for you today. Just kind of expose, you know, everyone's different play styles there. Oh, I can see Rough Gaming in the chat. Nice. Spoke to you earlier. Awesome. You love the spectator cam. That's that's wonderful. Absolutely. So we will shift into the player's perspective as well, as you can see. My personal favorite, though, is a third person. I love the over-the-shoulder look mm -hmm. when I'm picking up resources and building. I love to see the, the animations, but everyone's got their own, their own way to do it. I do really like that, that spectator cam has, has, has come out really awesome. Yeah, it's especially with the beautiful scenery and the weather's really nice right now. <laughs> True, so we'll see how long see that actually lasts. Yeah. We we're, will see. Yeah, we're not sure how long that's going to last, but that's all part of the fun. RNG will, will do its best, I'm, I'm sure. So I was, I was building my cabin because I did a big long play test myself last night and I was building a cabin by the water. This storm came in. I was inside my cabin, I'd finished it. Catcher's on fire, <laughs> I'm on fire, I run outside, <laughs> but of course it's really hard to move. Mm -hmm. I go down to the water, finally put myself out, turn around, there's this huge storm going on, look back, and my entire house is just in flames. Oh, gutted. How long yeah. did it take you to build it? Quite a um, while? <laughs> it took a while. The thing was, it didn't actually completely burn down, which was cool. I yeah. managed, after the storm, I got a fire whacker and I put it mostly out, so... Yep. Oh, that's good. Yeah, fire whackers are a thing. So uh, it's this long broom looking thing and you go around whacking. You can whack other players to put them out. Uh, but it's yeah, really useful for putting out fires on um, things that you have built. Uh, but I wouldn't bother if the trees are on fire. Probably best to stay away from those. Awesome. So they've decided, uh, they chose this area to build. They've decided to build by a lake um, because the scenery is really nice and pretty, I suppose. So. How close are they together? I think they're just still getting resources and, and preparing for the build ahead. So someone was asking about the spectator mm. cam. Um, yeah, our plan is to, to make sure it goes into the game. Um, I think, uh, you know, just like the content that we're making, like the trailer mm. and stuff like that and the music, we want content creators to be able to use all the stuff for, for what they're doing. Uh, it's just, I guess, such a, we think such an important part of. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. No, oh, it's really, really awesome. Cool beans. Uh, someone, someone saying they hope we see the fire waker in action. I would be, <laughs> I would be incredibly surprised if if, if it doesn't turn if, up. <laughs> yeah, if if someone's house doesn't go on. Uh, we're going to see but I think you know for the 30 minutes that they do have to build and to gather resources, I just said no, just do the outside. That's fine. Put some uh, awesome, awesome uh, structural things in there. You know, um, and I will uh, put a shout in there to Valheim as well. And um, Valheim has some really, really great um, architecture going on from the players. And we really do want to, um, you know, put that into Icarus. You know, what can you build in Icarus that reflects something that you're very um, proud of to make? So we're looking at the, oh, there we go. I'm trying to study Crafting. exactly what they're doing. Yeah. So I think uh, the beams were a cool addition as well. Um, that was something we weren't super sure about until basically, um, you know, played Valheim. I think the Valheim, you know, beams just really, really come to its own. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, we've, I definitely find building beams and being able to build off them uh, in Acris is really awesome. That's one of the first things I did in the game when I learned how to craft and how to build these. I built over, um, I built a bridge and it started crumbling like that um, piece was just there. And I was like, wait, what a minute, what's, what's going on here? And I realized, you know, those, those pillars and those beams are really important, um, especially if you're building up ways mm -hmm. as well. Well, that was something we invested a lot of time in was, uh, you know, the whole structural elements of, you know, mm. having to hold stuff up and just, I guess that works in really well with storms and stuff like that. Are, yep. they, are they building a tree house? I think they might <gasps> be building a tree house. That is smart. Well, it's smart until, uh, until, <laughs> until, until a storm <laughs> comes and blows the tree over on your house. But we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> 
so one thing that uh, we are doing after this 30 minutes is up of building, we are going to let the players completely destroy their cabins that they've created. Um, that's if the weather has got to them first. So it'll be really interesting to see um, the mayhem that uh, will ensue later on. Oh, I see Septic Falcon, hello by the way, says, will fire spread on foliage to any degree or just structures? Structures. Great. Uh, question yeah. it absolutely spreads um, so it spreads to trees it spreads um, on foliage um, it, it, uh, yeah it's pretty um, it's pretty crazy to watch it spreading I've seen it spread and it and you know it does spread quite fast but what's really awesome too is if it's not raining and there's a fire sort of outbreaking and it starts to rain the rain will actually put the mm -hmm. fire out which I think is really awesome it can actually work in your favor which is which is great Oh, somebody said in the Discord yesterday um, they're going to do a, a drinking game to um, every time I say the word awesome. Apparently I say it. I used to say it quite a lot. <laughs> so uh, shout out to you guys in the Discord that are in the Twitch chat. Um, I said I would try not say it, but there we go. <laughs> so right. are we getting a bridge here? I think it someone's like building it. a bridge. Maybe a, um, a lake house of sorts is starting to do. Oh dear, so they're encountering now building, see that was building too mm -hmm. far out, so the structure wasn't able to support, so now they're going to build some um, uh, some pillars to, um, yeah, to basically to make sure that they get the structural support in. <laughs> yeah, they have to be very wise about where they're going to be placing these. Sort of have to think mathematically, don't you, when it comes to building the structures? Yeah, so I'm guessing, so they're looking at building up, and maybe we've got most of the teams looking to build in tree huts here mm. as well, which is going to be, uh, which is going to be pretty challenging, I think, as they're finding. Mm -hmm. Can we, uh, Iron Chef Germany, thank you for the, the comment, can we destroy some of the rocks and have our buildings clip through so we can build our cabin and have a rock wall without having awkward holes at wall roof placement? Um, yeah, so the, the rock... Uh, uh, place in the world uh, can be voxelized so basically when you go up and you hit to it um, so every I suppose stone resource uh, every stone resource can be voxel mined um, the ones we don't let players mine are things basically the edges of rivers and stuff like yeah. that or the edges of mountains so we don't let um, you know we have those those rocks disabled from being able to basically be edited um, yeah but you can definitely go in and, um, and edit those oh Yep. I really love the particle effects with the wood uh, when it crumbles like mm -hmm. that. It's, it's really awesome. Oh, God. Here we go again. <laughs> we should have a little awesome counter <laughs> up on the top there. It's one of my favorite ones. I can't help it. <laughs> Are we planning to decrease the running speed uh, of the player and animals? They seem to be running kind of fast. Do you think that's something that the player could adjust? Or do you think it's just going to be the one speed fits all? Um, yeah, so I mean, I think that the key thing is we're trying to adjust everything overall for mm -hmm. like one experience now. Um, and yeah, I think we'll, we'll try and nail that first experience initially. Yeah. You know, it's really great to have these uh, dev streams because, you know, the game hasn't released yet and it's not a finished product. And it's really great to talk about, you know, what we're implementing, uh, what we're thinking about. Um, having those open discussions is uh, crucial to the community growth and having that relationship. Um, new NZ, what happens when the mission runs out? Uh, you have one option, get on your dropship. <laughs> Or not, and if you don't, uh, you do lose your progress from everything you've collected on Icarus, um, you do die, so you don't want that to happen. Uh, you need to take your resources and everything you've collected back up to your station. And that's actually um, leading me into a segue here. Everyone wants to know, you know, what's with the station, what can you do up there, but we are saving that for a different stream. So you will see uh, the station at some stage. Oh, see, now they're laying out this bridge and, and stuff with the beams. The, I really love the beams. So I remember in a previous, uh, in one of our test streams we were doing mm -hmm. for, I don't know, a journalist or something, Drew and Alyssa were building bridges. And I think it was Drew who actually built a beam and stone-based bridge. So they actually lined the edges of the bridge with beams and then um, put stones down on the base. And it just looked absolutely fantastic. Oh, look at that shot. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> and 
Absolutely brilliant. Look at that. I love how clean and sparkly clear that water looks. Yeah, so we spend a lot of time. There's actually a, a bunch of crazy technology behind uh, a lot of this. So we're actually using real virtual textures. So you can actually see that flow actually gets placed um, down on, the, uh, on where the water goes. So you can yeah. actually sort of see in the corner there, there's a bit of flow back up in the, in the direction. We really spend a lot of time on the environments to just try and get the fidelity of everything up. Even trying to break some of the things, like if you look at the edges of the lakes, uh, traditionally in video games, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, terrain you can just tell it just all sort of flows in. And we're really trying to break the silhouette a lot. Uh, of how you know the edges of the rocks, yeah. how how they go in and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah our right, our yeah. world building team has spent a lot of time, uh, and that was where we felt having a handcrafted map um, with procedural elements was mm -hmm. really the the best way to go. Definitely, and you know I'd love to get um, some other developers on the couch sometime and chat to them about the work that they've put into this game, so you can get to know them. Uh, that'll be wonderful for future streams as well. Alrighty, so yeah they are, they're going to be building a lake house by the looks of things, that's, uh, that's daring. So Orange uh, Sherbet was asking what type yeah. of warnings to get when a storm is on the way. Mm. Uh, we actually have a building that um, gives you information, so a deployable um, that gives you information on storms and stuff like that. But we are still toying with how we present information to the players. We've got a fairly sort of basic um, a system at the moment that we'll probably see come up on the stream and the bottom left uh, which is a status indicator so you can see they've got at the moment the little foot one there which is mm -hmm. basically uh, for some reason they, they'll be running slower around uh, but we're actually redoing that and coming up with a you know a way that has a little bit more heart um, and same with uh, I think we mentioned the attribute stream yeah. uh, sorry the attributes in the previous stream, we're actually going to be replacing that with a with a proper talent system, um, which is which is quite far in progress now. When I heard that, I was like so happy because I do I do love like RPG elements to mm -hmm. these sort of games. So uh, that's that's new news for for you guys in the chat. Well, it's a big part of progression, yeah. is you know, and the idea of of your character progressing over time and you choosing how your uh, how your character wants to grow and mm. stuff like that. That was very much something that um, we wanted to look into. Yeah. Oh, they've oh, got a storm. Oh, here we go. I've got a storm coming through. Got tree branches coming loose. It doesn't look too bad at this stage, so they should be all right. Oh. <laughs> what was that? Here we go. Yeah, so it is getting a little bit intense. This will be the first challenge for all the teams here with this weather coming through. I really like that. The, uh, they're doing a beam bridge here. I'm super glad about that. So what are the benefits of building a beam bridge? Um, it looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, so the, the beams are a really great way of, of adding that structural integrity in mm -hmm. as well. And certainly if you do beams and the frames, it's like super strong. And uh, that's kind of become very important when we've got... Um, vehicles in the game as well because those basically the weight that's on your structure includes not only what you've built on it but also uh, what is on top of it as well so yeah. characters and you know particularly vehicles I can hear yeah. people going whoa whoa yeah, in the yeah, studio you can in the background the here going around the studio oh no that, that, I, that oh, was why it was because of the lightning <laughs> <laughs> we had a little delay seeing it on the stream <laughs> and I can just hear laughter. Yeah. <laughs> just, just laughter in the background. You know, that's a really good sign. This is really fun. Uh, we have a lot of fun playing it in the dev test streams as well. You know, I'm still a, uh, a noob when it comes to this game, so I'm really looking forward to being able to build um, what they're doing right now, even with all this weather going on. There's just, we can just, in the, in the studio here, we can just hear hoots and laughter and hollering. <laughs> Oh. oh, that sounds like a chat heard the whoa as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I believe that was Taylor, wasn't it? it was Taylor. Maybe, she's, maybe. She's, she's the, probably the loudest one. Alrighty, we're going to take another few questions from the Twitch chat. If you've got them, roll them on in. We'd love to hear them. Alrighty, storms I, are scary. I don't know whether this uh, roof was planned or whether they're just chucking the roof on for some I protection. Think yeah, that's what it seems like they're putting it there for protection. So every building piece has variants, so that's where they're holding down um, 
uh, are to, to bring up mm -hmm. the variants of basically you know what they're building with oh look the way we can see a deer right there is there a fawn with the deer yes there is oh and off they go oh she left her, her fawn behind <laughs> So they're moving very slow. So we, we have this idea for storms, we wanted uh, what we're calling 10 seconds of chaos. Mm -hmm. So basically, unfortunately, at the moment with weather, the way the build's at is the 10 seconds of chaos last quite a long time. Yeah. So we haven't balanced this yet. This has been a very new mechanic going into the game, which is why, you know, so, so your movement should only really be restricted for 10 seconds, um, but at the moment it's, it's quite a lot longer. So this storm's ended up being quite a lot worse than we thought. At least there hasn't been too much lightning. Yeah. Uh, that's I say true. that and then there's a lightning flash. Absolutely. That's always how it happens. Um, Jaded Kudos, can you scavenge the branches that are being blown around after the storm? No, you can't. But there is uh, loose sticks on the ground mm -hmm. and stuff like that that you can pick up. But to be honest, that's really more of a starting resource. Yeah. Because a more efficient way of getting sticks and wood is to, well, sticks just, you know, picking up the small seedlings, but also chopping down the trees just gives you yep. so much more wood um, than you otherwise would get. Absolutely. I can only imagine if you've got a structure with no roof and then all these branches come in, they would just pile up everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably don't want that. Spudman, can we build in caves? Can we dig our own caves? Can we have living roofs? So um, the shelter mechanic in the game is actually pretty cool. It's based on uh, ray tracers heading off around the player. Mm -hmm. So any kind of enclosed space that they're in will give you more shelter. So, for example, sometimes during storms in our playtests, people have actually hollowed out a large rock and gone inside the large rock to seek shelter. Uh, but we only allow you to voxel mine certain things because it just causes too much of a problem for us if the whole map was. But you can absolutely build inside caves, and you know we've done that many times as well. And where would you find those caves? Would you find them in this biome or in other biomes? Yeah, so they're all over the place. Um, you know, the map is actually quite large. So even though it we've is. got a lot of caves, it, you know, you think, oh, wow, it would be easier to come across a cave. But like in my play test last night for a couple of hours, I didn't actually come across a cave. But yeah, mm -hmm. there is plenty around. Oh, we're really starting to see that, um, that building develop. Ooh. I just find that tree chopping so satisfying. It never gets old. Never gets old. Uh, someone in chat asks whether the game's coming in other languages. Yeah, we're definitely localising it um, very heavily. We just haven't haven't at the moment, obviously, yep. with where we're at with the, with the game. That's on our plan. You know, we want this game to be uh, accessed worldwide. We want as many people as possible to enjoy it and play together. Great. Oh, that's a good question. Any plans to make Storm Debris damage players? Um, so we experimented a lot with how storms affect you in different biomes. So the desert biome was one that we were really playing with to see how, you know, how players might deal with a, a storm, say, affecting them pretty badly. But there was, it did sort of get quite annoying, so it's been something we've sort of been playing with. A lot of it comes down to you've got to give information to the player before stuff happens. Yeah. Rightio. Cool. So... I believe this is a different team here also building on the lake, or is that the same team? Yeah, maybe I'm not sure. I think we saw... Maybe some of it got destroyed, maybe. Maybe some of it got destroyed, or they might have actually pulled some of it down, I think. Yeah. So, you know, we've been working a lot with pacing. Um, mm. That's been something that we've worked a lot with, and I, I think, uh, you know, a few people, as I'd mentioned, had picked up on it being very fast-paced in the previous build. Um, so, you know, that, that's definitely at the, the point we're at now is basically starting to work on what is the pacing that we want. And, um, and you know, and that involves changing and sort of playing around with how long it takes to chop down a tree, how long it takes to get this or that. Uh, I'd written up a lot of feedback from my playtest last night and much of it was really around that, basically getting that pacing right. So I think through the dev streams, people are going to see us playing a lot with how long it takes to build these yes. things and stuff like that. Yep. Definitely. Oh, look, we've got a large um, panning shot there. Uh, Space Eccentric said, are all the biomes connected or are they separated by sessions or is it one map? So um, at the moment we're working with about three different biomes per map. So we, um, in, this, uh, in this map you have forest, you have arctic and desert. 
um, and there's actually a couple of different instances of each one and they're they're quite they're quite different just because it's a forest biome doesn't mean it's all the same as yeah. every forest biome so yeah it's um and um you you basically have to find passes between impassable mountains so the biomes are, sere- are separated by these huge mountains mm-hmm. and um they're kind of like a border but they'll have areas um like passes that you can yeah. go to to walk between them sometimes you can actually find caves that take you through into another biome as well yeah i mean i landed in uh, one of the icy snowy areas and i was <laughs> way above sea level and um i had to run for quite a while to try and find like a pass to get to another biome and i ran through um packs of wolves um saw a polar bear at one point i went into another biome and saw some other animals which i'm not sure if i'm allowed to say uh, but there is a variety of them out there across the biomes which is awesome um but i do love you know how there there are hurdles across the way it's not just you can run from a to b you've actually got to to look at your map and uh, say, hey, I think I need to go this way and search that route. Uh, there we go. Thanks for answering my question. You are welcome. Happy, happy, happy to do that. Is there a maximum number of players you can have? We're eight, eight players maximum. Um, were you thinking for the spectator camera, would that have to be one player in the party or could that be Good an extra question. person? Um, uh, I'm not sure. Probably it will be within the eight players. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're trying to target that balance between the amount of, um, like, bandwidth um, yes. that we're introducing. Because there's a lot that can go on in the game. So if you look, you, you imagine an 8 by 8 kilometer map. You're picking, you can pick up all the foliage, mm. you can pick up, you know, you can mine all the rocks, you can chop down the trees. Um, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a lot of work. I've seen a few mentions, someone at the start of the stream said, you know, oh, this game's going to melt my GPU. We've definitely been making what we think is one of the prettiest survival games out there. Yeah. And we've actually worked very closely with both NVIDIA and Epic, uh, who make the engine Unreal, to really try and bring um, some of the highest visual fidelity you see in survival games. But we're also working with them around a lot of optimization areas, and our tech lead, Ben Carnell, who literally wrote a book on Unreal Engine game development, has been yeah. you know, working with the team very hard to also optimize the game a lot. Um, I was getting really good frame rates when I was playing yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, The only thing I noticed was a couple of occasional hatches um, as we were loading in new areas. uh, But the cool thing is we haven't really done our major optimization pass yet anyway. Yeah, I mean, as the dev streams go by, the game will actually look better and better um, as far as that's concerned. And uh, you'll see all these new items uh, being introduced as well. Oh, new areas. a great question here as well. Will there be different future building components other than wood? There already is. So we've got, uh, we just put in a new one actually, Thatch. So Thatch is this er- very early tier where you can really rapidly build a building. Yeah. Because you need shelter for many of your crafting uh, benches, um, you know, we wanted something you can build very quickly, but of course thatch buildings will just get obliterated yeah. by storms. Um, then there's wood, um, which we're seeing here. Uh, there's a stone building tier, uh, and then concrete is kind of sort of a mixture of metal and this additional mm-hmm. um, building tier. And we've got some ideas for some other ones as well, but that's our broad sort of tech tiers that we've got going on for building materials. Yeah, and I imagine concrete would just be super strong, weather won't be able to really uh, affect it too much, which would be awesome, but it is hard to, to gather those resources and it is time consuming, isn't it? Yeah, so a lot of people, um, you know, it's easy to think with the, the timing thing um, that it sort of restricts your building ability, but really the idea of the timing thing is to put some parameters around your session so that mm. your building is actually with focus. Yes. And I think about it in Valheim, you know, when you when we were going to do one of the bosses, we would build a little mini base, and that was a really good way to approach building for mm. Uh, for people because you're doing it with a purpose. You're like, okay, we need to build a base here, you know, so we can repair whatever particular tier of equipment we've got. And that's really the idea around sessionizing this game. So, you know, our our session lengths can really vary a lot and it's the player who gets to choose a mission that's a a length that they want. So, you know, you might choose one that's a week long and that gives you plenty of time to invest still while having that structured environment. Yes, Um, exactly. Alrighty, how much progress are we making aesthetic wise? I am not too sure, but they are hard at work here. I can see. 
that partially been destroyed? Yes. So the reason that you'd want to use a lot of the advanced materials is basically, uh, you know, the, fo the forest biome when here is actually the safest biome. And as the game progresses, we'll actually be unlocking even more biomes. Mm. And uh, those biomes are not as safe as, uh, as, as forests. So you will need those advanced building materials if you want your building to yeah. survive. Additionally, things like snow and sand can build up on top of your buildings and the other biomes and actually cause collapsed roofs and things like that. So what you're actually building your buildings out of becomes very, very important. Oh, we've got a few questions about vehicles, but uh, we'll have to hold off of those for now. But yes, you have seen them and we will talk about them later. Awesome. We've got another question from uh, 007 Gamer. If you leave for another area, is it possible to come back to your building burnt down or destroyed? Like, is it a proximity to the player or does it keep the chunks loaded? Yeah, so we've been focusing a lot on sort of putting, oh, they're, they're very lucky they caught that trend time because the trees falling down actually damages your structures. But um, yeah, um, there's, there's a variety of different mechanics involved with storms and stuff like that. Uh, and we've really only kind of just recently got the storms functioning um, broadly how we wanted. And now we're actually looking in at ways for you to, I suppose, uh, help and prepare around storms to help you. So I definitely say at the moment the storms are maybe a little bit more brutal than we want in terms of, uh, you know, when you're away, the yeah. buildings can burn down. Um, but we are now basically, uh, you know, we, we sort of make the problem and then we go in and design the stuff, yeah. the solutions for it. And uh, yeah, and I think that's a, re that's a really intent focused uh, design process which I really like it's basically don't just throw in a bunch of cool stuff in the game you know create these uh, problems for the player and then create a bunch of tools the players can use to deal with those problems absolutely alrighty does take a lot of wood to, to build these now people people are saying you know once you finish your mission can you come back mm -hmm. at all to the buildings or does it uh, get reset we actually have all the data from someone's play session when they finish a drop and we're still thinking about what we do with that um, you know we can actually load that into other players session and and stuff like that so um, while yes our focus and intent is on putting the structure around we you know we actually have that data and we are going to be looking at what we can do with mm -hmm. it and then we'll definitely have more information on that in the future you know there's definitely a lot we can do with the player data that will make it fun for the player as well like possibly you know checking uh, how many resources you've mm -hmm. collected over time um, how many cabins you've built all that sort of thing is, is definitely possible uh, rough gaming says dean mentioned catching a tree um, can a player direct which way it drops so yeah, um, the, the tree will fall in the opposite direction to where you hit it. Um, but after it starts falling over, you can actually start harvesting in that. Mm -hmm. and, and that can actually make it start falling in a different direction if, if you're maybe a little fast. Great. Well, there we go. That's looking, that's coming around quite nicely. It is. Oh, I see what they're doing here. So they're making like, a, it's like a almost, uh, um, <laughs> like a port building sort of thing. You can tell that they've thought about this beforehand, can't yeah, you? Yeah. <laughs> they've really thought this through. Uh, so uh, Rough Gaming asked about structure integrity like Valheim. Um, so it's definitely, uh, you know, we've, we're going even further beyond in terms of structural integrity mm. than Valheim. So there's quite a complex structural integrity system that also takes into account what's on the structure such as vehicles and stuff like that right. and even how much is inside the vehicles. Absolutely. And we really did put a lot of time into the aesthetics as well. We wanted to and I think uh, you know playing games like Conan and stuff like that what we wanted to do is have not only really beautiful looking buildings but have a reason for building the cool buildings and, and that yeah. I think has been the key focus of our sort of sessionizing things. Awesome. Alrighty, so maybe if we can get a last final uh, few pans of each individual building uh, to show the to show you guys the chat uh, the progress that's coming along. We are going to be entering the straw poll into the chat very shortly so you can vote on these buildings. And uh, who are we watching right now? I believe this might actually be. Hmm, let me see. 
Oh, so they're putting some beams inside. Yeah. I really like the beams inside. Um, you know, and it was something I noticed in Valheim as well. When you get these really awesome, uh, you know, sort of internal structures, it can actually make things look fantastic. Um, so I did see people asking a lot about prices and stuff like that. We're not releasing any details with that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, kind of like with the game, we want to make sure we get the game right. And we also want to make sure that whatever we do in terms of you know, pricing and stuff like that, that it works with the game. I think there's just a lot of examples of bad um, uh, pricing structures and bad payment models for games that have uh, taken an otherwise good game and broken it. Yeah. We're not going to make any decision about anything with pricing the game unless we're 100% satisfied that it works well with the game. Yep. That's very important. You know, we do care. We are thinking ahead. Um, alrighty, so I believe this was uh, Taylor and Delissa, if I'm not correct. Negative? Oh. <laughs> So we did have some name tags above the players, but unfortunately we couldn't get that in for you today. Uh, so I am getting fed through, through my little earpiece here, um, who we are watching right now. Yeah, so you know, one of the Francis cool... Francis and uh, Oh, this is Adam. Francis and Adam. Oh, Francis nice. and Drew, sorry. Fra Francis, Francis and, Drew. and Drew, got it. This is one of my favorite places to build on the map as yeah. well, just because there's some really awesome waterfalls mm. oh, um, yes. around. Beautiful. Now this is uh, Adam and Sean. So we just saw uh, Francis and Drew. Now this one's Adam and Sean. I'm definitely loving yeah. the fact that all the teams have really been focusing a lot on bridges. Absolutely. I. This is my favourite so far. I kind of like how they've got that little bridge going to their little. It's very cute. I like it. Small little island. bridge. Yes. Well, you see that beautiful uh, waterfall on the background there. Uh, Bowie, in terms of shortest drop, we haven't really decided anything about particular drop times. Mm. It's something that we've been learning with and evol uh, evolving as time's gone on. And um, so we're still playing around with what are the good drop times. I think even into our beta, we'll be playing around with yeah. what are the drop times that work best, you know, how long should we have them, uh, you know, should there be permanent drops, all that kind of stuff. Right, and we're going to see the forest teams here. Awesome. So this will be Alyssa and Taylor working in the forest. And she got hurt by something. Yeah, uh, falling tree. <laughs> falling tree. Yeah, got to watch out for those. Oh, that's looking nice. Wow. So they, um, they, I think their brief was to focus on the outside, right, rather mm. than the internal aesthetics. Yes, absolutely. Just didn't yep. have enough time. Um, and so, yeah, I think the idea of sort of building almost this treehouse was a very cool idea. Oh, I really like that. the beams. beams I love how beams Liam are a huge is one. like going through it, like mm -hmm. such a nice, like... You know, while we're, while we're sitting here playing, so, so we have refined wood, which is a, um, which you can use for internal. We should have refined wood beams. We should note that down because I feel like we should provide you lots of options in terms of beams. Beams! There we go. We actually, uh, people might have noticed in the last stream, none of our characters had heads. Yes. Um, we finally got uh, <laughs> character customization going in. It's amazing how much it actually adds to it. Um, yeah. Beams, excited about the beams. We, we also, with the building, we tried to make it float in together a lot more, the, the different tiers. Mm. So, for example, they've got wooden, like, uh, window coverings now. You can actually get these really cool glass coverings. So if you actually look at the way the building tiers work together, there's kind of bits of overlap between them. Um, so even as you're heading towards, say, stone buildings, you might have the walls all in stone, but not the ceiling and stuff like that. And I, I really like that because it's a lot more organic um, rather than just, oh, this building is all in wood tier. And we iterated a heap of times on mm. the building pieces themselves to also try and make them work together. Yeah. You know, you can see it all coming through in a singularity and it really does look amazing. Cool. Alrighty. I think that, yes, I believe that the straw poll might have ended. We'll have to double check that. There we go. Oh, incredible. 
kind of want to make a home there. It really shows <laughs> off the um, <laughs> really shows off the real virtual textures with the uh, uh, the water based. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, flow movement there really nicely as well. All right, we've got four minutes left on the poll. Four minutes to vote. This oh, they got a chimney uh, in Francis there. Francis and Drew, they're boasting a nice open deck area flowing on the outside of the house with a stone chimney. Good feng shui. And they've even got a little deck going in stairs into the into the lake there as well. Perhaps they might sail off. I, into I feel the like sunset. they could have they could have done the walls in stone. I feel like if they were if they were putting the time in there to put the fireplace in, they could have done mm. the walls in stone. Mm. That would have been uh, that would have been my suggestion. But I really like that uh, that entryway bridge. I this love is turning that. into episode of like house and garden or grand designs. <laughs> You know, it grand really designs. Is. It is like we should have like <laughs> interviews with them about, you know. Oh, that would be amazing. We have to do that for another stream, I think. Oh, look at that. Oh, Liam. Liam's done brilliantly. Oh, we've got the beautiful oh, fireplace nice going fireplace there. Oh, there's there. even a chair. <laughs> got a chair. You can sit there, warm your feet. They've really thought about this. That's, that's brilliant. Nice table. Mmm. That's cosy. And it's cozy. Oh, and they've even got some internal beams in there. I think very <laughs> solid. Great stuff. Just don't get too close to the fire. We spent. Uh, we <laughs> iterated. We iterated the fire so many times. Like we did the mm -hmm. fireplace so many times. Awesome. Okay, so they've got a nice little adjoining one there. Here. Yep. That's very interesting. So they've built this adjoining house over top of the other river, which I think is a very cool idea. I think I would have liked to have seen some stone in yeah. here. I feel like they could have. There's a lot of stone around in this area. Um, maybe it was just a, due to the 30 minutes that we're giving them to build this? Uh, maybe, yeah. I, I think that uh, I think there was a lot of rebuilding going on. Oh, um, thanks to that lovely storm. True. <laughs> You like the minimal UI. Thank you very much. So they've, they've gone for, I think this is a more functional one. So, um, you know, Adam, one of our designers, uh, he's from uh, Miscreated. Um, mm -hmm. And was it Adam and Francis, I think? Yes, And Francis is a very Francis. talented programmer. So I think they've, they've definitely oh, focused. Sean, sorry. Yes. Oh, is this Adam and Sean? Yeah. Um, so Sean's one of our artists who's actually on our design team. Mm -hmm. We try and have cross-functional teams. Uh, and I feel like this is a nicely functional building as well. Sean has played a lot of uh, this game as well. He actually recreated the building we're in now oh, did in he? the game. Yeah, it was quite wild. Um, and then set it is on fire. Insane. I love the different levels. There's a variation there. Very, uh, wow, yes, that's very, very good. I, um, awesome. I don't know whether they're going to be able to do that uh, chimney much longer because we've had a talk about so stone items at the moment are not adding quite as much weight as we want. I was going to say. So in future, yeah. um, you'll definitely see that would make that collapse. But you see that they've actually run beams along the bottom of the building there. Yes. That's uh, very important for them basically having that structural integrity. Mm -hmm. And I, I presume, is this the last one? Oh, I think they're making some refined wood here. Yeah, they are. So they've placed down a carpentry bench and uh, refined wood allows you to build a bunch of really cool internal type walls and stuff like that. One minute left on the poll. This is Alyssa and Taylor in the forest. So they've got a fireplace as well. Oh, so they, yeah, they're using their refined wood to place some furniture. Oh, that looks like they're stressing a bit here. <laughs> Last minute touches that they're trying to do. Oh, someone said, I see jewels when uh, crafting. Um, explain. Um, so we have a sort of generic sense of an energy unit. So many of the uh, buildings that you can place down, sorry, the deployables that you can place down, like a smelter or something like that, they require energy. You can use, say, burning wood. You can burn sticks. You can actually make biofuel and a composter wow. and use yeah. that. Um, or, uh, so yeah, options. stuff like that. Um, yeah. <gasps> we have the results for the straw poll. If we can uh, I feel like I'm the last one to, out. to find out. <laughs> he doesn't yeah, I hear people it, yelling over me. there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so thank you all so much for voting. This week's winners for the uh, Who Can Build the Most Aesthetic Cabin goes to Taylor and Alyssa. Woo! They can hear us clapping from here. <laughs> so are we, are we looking around the winning... Uh, we are. Uh, we're going to take a tour of the the winning house. 
Nice. Oh, look, they've even got torches. Oh, Ober Kenobi says, why didn't they put the floor all the same way? I was noticing the same mm. thing as I saw them building. I think it was just speed. Uh, yeah, there are railings for the ramps and stairs. I think there is. If not, I will definitely make sure there is. Right, nice fireplace. They don't have a chair Indoor, though. Indoor outdoor flow. <laughs> Is it's heading back? Yeah, they, they didn't. Well, they, they built a table, so I think they were starting on the furniture. Mm -hmm. Nice. A nice little patio decking area mm -hmm, up mm -hmm. here. Host a, a few parties, have some meals. <laughs> it could have been anything. Now I think, though, this is the start of the best bit, which is when we get to see them all get destroyed. Okay. I really hope we see some fire here. <laughs> We're going to see some fire. I need, probably need to go out and make sure we get fire. <laughs> So uh, hopefully we're going to see at least one of them burn down and hopefully we're going to see some structural based destruction as well. Awesome. All right. So they've just been given the cue to destroy their bases as crazily as they can. I am looking forward to watching this. <laughs> I, I think there's going to be a lot of fire. There might even be forest fires. The flames, especially for Taylor and Alyssa in the forest. Mm -hmm. Uh, the trees will probably catch fire. It is well. worthwhile telling people we haven't actually done a full uh, tech art pass on the forest fires mm -hmm. yet, um, so that's uh, that's still to come. But you can you will at least be able to see uh, the trees on fire and how it spreads. Oh, so they've set themselves on fire. Interesting. <laughs> this is a it's an interesting theory. Okay, we can see some down in the corner there. Uh, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, this is yeah. Uh, they. They might die before it's, um... <laughs> I would advise going into the water. Don't, please don't die. <laughs> so this is what happens when you're on fire. You're smoking, uh, you smell a little bit. You can fire whack there. They've got the fire whackers out. Okay, we've got a tree that's gone up in flames. Yep. Um, <laughs> <there. laughs> oh, and oh. the neighboring trees, there you go. Oh dear, it's, yep. it's. it's uh... <laughs> It's it's all going it's all going up it's pretty getting, badly. It's getting wild. This is definitely the the best part. Oh, there it goes. It's gonna fall into the lake. Oh, and we've got another one. Oh, a tree's actually fallen onto that. Onto the building. Um. <laughs> See that oh, catches that tree fire just catches up very quickly. Yeah. Like it's realistic, isn't it? Yeah, we're still playing around with the speeds of some mm. stuff as well. Um, so expect to see a lot of change with that as well. Um, and we're actually going to be, at the moment, we're not swapping the trees out for a, a burned out model. Um, mm. uh, but that's coming. It's basically because uh, Forest Forest has been um, something that we've put in reasonably late. Down. Now, they've built with so many beams that, it, that the tree actually falling on the building didn't damage it that much. So oh, that's there you the go. Thing. It, it damaged it a bit more Yeah, now. it damaged a little bit, but basically, in it, oh, they're cutting down another tree on it. They're really oh, they're, trying to... Yep. Oh, May that one looks like it smashed what a little bit What do we say? More. Architecture and mayhem. <laughs> Unfortunately, we probably put a bit much smoke in the smoke particles, so we don't get to <laughs> see a lot of it. Uh, fire, fire spread slower, or will they get put out by rain? Yeah, so we're we're we're, we're working around an AI mm. director to control things to yeah. stop completely breaking your game. But you can see it's pretty wild here. There's an extreme storm rolling in, so we'll have to see what happens there. Oh, I think we lost our host. <laughs> 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 womp, womp. That's the ultimate there destruction. Go. Okay, I'm not sure what Alrighty, happened there. So they're trying to create another fire or oh, catch themselves. Yep, that's, I guess that's the most effective way. Well, yes, that's, a, that's an interesting way to go about it. That is quite terrifying. <laughs> so you wouldn't want to do this in, in a game session where you're wanting to make it back to your dropship, but for the stream purposes and for entertainment, yes, by all means, set yourself on fire. <laughs> so the rain will be dampening things down a little bit. Um, and so you see it's it's making the forest fire not spread quite as much. Mm -hmm. And as I did say before, at the moment, after the trees burn, all it does is become a darkened variant of it. Yeah. That is going to change. They will be getting swapped out with a tree. And as you harvest that tree, you actually get charcoal. So oh, you need charcoal for crafting gunpowder. Mm -hmm. So actually a, a great way to get a lot of charcoal is to set the forest on fire. Mm. Awesome. Alrighty, so we can see there is a lot of mayhem, a lot of distraction. This uh, storm is coming in. 
as another another event here. But I, I would say I think I think we showed a lot in today's stream. I think it was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Um, you really got to see a lot of the structures from the different cabins they were building. Um, I certainly really enjoyed watching. This is probably my favorite part, but what were your thoughts about what we saw today? Yeah, look, it's, it's been really good for us to sort of see the game, the, you know, the broad pieces all in there and working. Um, now for us, a big challenge is basically balance and iteration. Uh, we've made a bunch of problems for the players to face. Now, you know, we're sort of going back in and figuring out, okay, what other tools should we add? You know, how can we give things for the players to counter fire? How can we give things for them to counter um, the storms and stuff like that? Yes. And then also, you know, how do we sort the progression for the player at that meta level as well as at the character level as well? So Absolutely. that's that's something that's going to be really awesome for us to show off in the streams. Yeah, this definitely was a really great exercise to show you what the problems you are uh, you can face when you're trying to build and survive. And we really hope that you enjoyed it. Um, it's been super fun hosting today's stream and we will be back next week. It's confirmed and uh, we'll have to get planning on what we're going to show next time. Yeah, and please do hop into the Discord. Um, yep. you know, we, our devs are allowed to actually go in the Discord and talk with people. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, if they go to surviveicarus.com, it has all the links to everywhere and you know, obviously they can, they can follow on on uh, Twitch here and um, yeah. Press the follow button. We're also going to be dropping a behind the scenes look at how Icarus has come to life. We're going to have multiple episodes, but you can expect one to drop next week, which will be absolutely incredible. Um, I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us. And just to plug the Discord again, discord.gg slash survive Icarus. Awesome. And we'll see you prospectors later. Bye. And we'll pretend to talk to each other. Shuffle papers. <laughs>